Guys, I'm at the airport in Nashville and just wanted to share with you because this has happened so many times over the last couple of days. A woman about my age, a black woman, came up and wanted to tell me how scared she is for herself, her family, and our country if Kamala Harris is elected. I've been here in Tennessee, I've been in Mississippi, I've been in Texas, and I've been in Atlanta over the last week. The number of black people who've come up to me and said exactly that is astounding. And their message is, what do they think we all vote the same and aren't smart enough to think for ourselves, aren't smart enough to bring an ID to vote. You guys, it's so sad, but it's good that there's a groundswell for this. And I just wanted everybody out there, maybe people who look like me and people who don't, to know you are not alone. And you got to do something about that fear. You can't just sit quietly, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, and do not ta allow them to take you for granted because of the color of your skin. So we got a fight on our hands, and I just hope and pray that you guys get out there and vote to do the right thing. Don't vote on personality or feelings. You vote on policy and what's best for our country. So you're not alone. As we get closer and closer to this election, we are seeing more and more people who are deciding not to vote based on biblical values. You have so many people that are voting based upon identity politics. They're voting based upon external superficial characteristics, whether or not the candidate looks like them, whether or not the candidate is black, whether or not the candidate is a female, whether or not the candidate makes them feel good, whether or not the candidate gives them courage, whether or not the candidate represents them in terms of their masculinity, whether or not the candidate is a straight talker, all these different things. As believers, we vote for a candidate based upon their policies that closely aligns to biblical values. That is what drives how we vote. But for far too long in the black community, we have not voted that way. We have been duped, we have been deceived, we have been tricked by these church plant pastors and by the media and by entertainers and celebrities to vote based upon appearance. That is the most shallow way to vote. But we have been shamed into voting this way for decades because of the pressure that the culture puts on us. And as more and more people try to break out of this, they're doing it quietly just listen to say Steele talk about this guys i'm at the airport in nashville and just wanted to share with you because this has happened so many times over the last couple of days a woman about my age a black woman came up and wanted to tell me how scared she is for herself her family and our country if kamala harris is elected i've been here in tennessee i've been in mississippi i've been in texas and i've been in atlanta over the last week the number of black people who've come up to me and said exactly that is astounding and their message is, what do they think we all vote the same and aren't smart enough to think for ourselves, aren't smart enough to bring an ID to vote? You guys, it's so sad, but it's good that there's a groundswell for this. And I just wanted everybody out there, maybe people who look like me and people who don't, to know you are not alone. And you got to do something about that fear. You can't just sit quietly, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, and do not ta allow them to take you for granted because of the color of your skin. So we got a fight on our hands, and I just hope and pray that you guys get out there and vote to do the right thing. Don't vote on personality or feelings. You vote on policy and what's best for our country. So you're not alone. And so as more and more people realize that I need to vote based upon things that are important to me, we can't be shame we can't be scared to vote for biblical values we have to be courageous enough to say no the future of my children depends upon the election that i make the reason why we vote based upon biblical values is this as christians we're part of the kingdom of heaven our citizenship is in heaven and as kingdom citizens we vote here on earth reflective of our kingdom heritage reflective of our kingdom citizenship. So what does that mean? That means as a Christian, I'm not going to vote for the mutilation of children. As a Christian, I'm not going to vote for children being unalived in the womb. If a person is pushing that at the top of their agenda and are trying to persuade you to vote for them simply because of that, as a Christian, that should be a hard no, because as a Christian, we are concerned about life. 
As a Christian, we are concerned about security, protecting the borders here in America. That is important to us because this is the land that we live in. Now, if you live somewhere else and you listen to this video, this doesn't necessarily apply to you. But I bet you, I bet you will want your government to make sure that your borders are secure as well. But see, here in America, we have a porous southern border. And the northern border is not as secure as people make it out to be. But nevertheless, the southern border is where we have the influx of people coming over here into black areas, black communities, Venezuelan gangs, and other people coming into a community and terrorizing the community and remaking and reshaping the community. But yet, you have black people that will still vote for people because they have been told that's what you do. They are too afraid to think for themselves, too afraid to realize and execute their own agency. They will rather be told what to do because it is hard going against the grain. It really is. But as Christians, we're supposed to be countercultural. We're supposed to be different. But see, that's the problem you have with a lot of black Christians. They don't want to be countercultural. Persecution is no fun. Perse and this is not real persecution. Just think about some of the brothers and sisters in other countries that may lose their lives standing up for the kingdom of God. And you can't say that you're going to vote for biblical values because you're afraid of a little heat. What would those brothers and sisters think of you? You are afraid of a little heat from your family and from your friends. You are afraid of losing family and friends when you stand for biblical values. And notice I'm not saying you stand up for a particular party. Because when you vote biblical values, the party does not matter. If one party has a candidate you don't believe in, that is espousing things that you don't believe in, don't vote for that candidate. But make sure that when you vote, you're voting based upon the principles that God has laid out in his word. Like I said, you're not going to vote for somebody that is pushing an agenda of death. You don't vote for somebody pushing an agenda of death as a Christian. Now, if you are a church plant, a church Negro, then go ahead. You're going you're gonna to vote for somebody based upon those things because the word of God is not the final authority in your life. Your relationship with God is not the final authority in your life. So who cares? You're going to vote based upon external superficial things. You're going to definitely continue to vote the same way and see no change in the community. Because that's not important to you. You're going to vote for selfish things. It's not important to you. Or you're going to let the media convince you how to vote. They're going to tell you how to vote a certain way because of the narrative they're looking to push. I mean, this the media has done a great job with Kamala Harris. I mean, they have been able to transform her from a person that no one liked to being a godlike figure. I believe that if Kamala Harris gets into office, it will be proven that the media can take a person that was 1% in likability, 1% in terms of the lowest of all the presidential candidates when she was running, and literally turn her into a pop star. So it's, it's very much so that uh, this nation will not be the same way. And am I concerned almost to fear, not to fear, but majorly concerned uh, because you're talking about a failing economy now. It's just going to go deeper and deeper into inflation and the economy will be a wreck. So we have a lot to pray for in this nation. If we don't pray, God knows, like he said in his word, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll heal the land and forgive them of their sins. Our land needs healing. Yes. Give us four more years, God. Give us, America needs four more years of an aggressive leadership. Not a passive leadership, but an aggressive leadership to make a difference. That is what the media does and that is what the culture does. They want to scare people, especially black people, into voting against biblical values. So what will Christians do? Will you vote based upon your convictions? Because like I've said, your vote is a reflection of your values. It is. You vote your values. If you value the opinion of men over the opinion of God, 
You're going to vote accordingly. And notice I didn't say vote for a particular party. I'm saying you vote according to the word of God, according to biblical principles and biblical values. As a Christian, that's how we decide who we're going to vote for. But at the end of the day, do not vote for a candidate or a party that wants to keep the black community in a permanent state of victimhood. Because we're not victims. We are empowered for greatness.